can see, today I'm going to be covering a cushion. And this cushion belongs under a bay window. I made the red cushion uh, cover probably around 10 years ago. And as you can see, my customer still remain faithful to me and she's back with a new set of curtains and a change of cover. So today, as you can see, on the previous one, I had piped it. Now, I was going to take this piping out and reuse it, but I thought maybe not, because one day she might be able to wash this and put it back on again, have a change, just in case you have something red. Because I believe as well, uh, when I made this as well, her bedroom of throw over had red in it. So there's red somewhere in the house. So you can see the awkward shape about it. So what I'm going to do once again, I'm going to do the two top bits, the bottom and the top in one stretch, no joining. And the sections that goes round here, they will be joined to save on fabric. And then at the back here, I have two pieces of fabric, one at each side, and put a zip right in the middle of it. Now you could put a zip right on the end, but you're gonna give yourself trouble if you do that because you've got the pipe in as well. So it's best to put it in two parts, make it a little bit wider than the original size, and put a long zip in it, make it easy access, and, and then put a join in right here, but nobody can see it, a join there and join, and then, the flow of it, it just continued going all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see as well, I lined the original cushion. So the lining is quite all right. You don't need to take it off or anything. Um, so I'm just going to draw around it. So I'll get on with that. And you can't see the line, but I'm going to get a different colour Taylor's chalk. talking at this moment but it's really simple you can see what it is I've done I've cut around it and that's that and now I'm going to cut the raw edges off right here I don't have to but I will do because um, I want to now I've maintained a pattern whereby there is a the pattern here i've kept it so there's a straight line there's a straight line there so i've just gone off a little bit here so let me straighten that up because when i'm sewing i'm going to be using it So what I need now is a two um, a strip to go all the way round. Uh, 
the thickness of this strip this um, sponge is three inches so I'm going to cut my next uh, fabric say four inches nah I'll cut it I'll cut it at five inches that way I've got a lot of turn, over, turn up in there and because I find that sometimes I don't need to overlock cushion covers because as you can see they don't always wash these things so it's not going to fray so much and when I leave a one inch seam allowance in it that'll be fine another thing is as well is that when you have um, piping going all the way around and to overlock it as well sometimes it's hell so it's best you just leave it alone by the way I'm hobbling around my table because I need a, a new hip replacement until then I've got to keep on moving here is 190 centimeters which is 75 inches so I'm going to cut it at allowing an inch over an inch here so I'm going to cut it at 77 inches so I'm going to take that section from my leftovers that I am at the moment I haven't shown you the whole of the making of that because you've seen it on the smaller version and as well as because it's a customer and I'm in a hurry and doing this to finish it because I'm running out of time um, I thought I'll show you as well because on the valance what I have done is that it's not the same as the um, curtains where I turned it over and then put the buckram, buckram inside and then stitched all along this one I'm doing it the right way well there is no right and wrong this one I'm doing it the the um, better quality way because this is on top of the curtains the one underneath is not going to be shown so why bother waste time this is a lot of hand stitching doing it this way but there is another way as well whereby I will show you so I come up to this stage and I I've pinned it and I've measured it and the length and the drop of the, the, the deepest is 15 inches and the shortest bit is is um, 11 inches and I've made a pattern there which the customers want is slightly different from their original but she won't mind me doing that so what here what you do is you turn this bit inside do you remember when I explained to you this that way but both together or it's that way and it turns over well now I'm doing it like that so I'm putting the lining and the fabric inside and the buckram will go inside it as well Now this valance is very long. Oh, 
I always, at the end of this buckram, I always um, double it under. And the reason for this is because um, when I put the hooks in, I, this is the end, I make it nice and strong. So I always do that. Then I get a pin. The lining, I will make the lining a little bit shorter than the main fabric. Here as you can see, there's the main fabric turned in, there's the buckram and here is the lining on top. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to make sure the lining is just a little bit down I'm going to pin it down and this I'm going to do all the way along and then when I undo this, take the adhesive off, then I'm going to stick this along here all the way down uh, and that's it. But because it uh, anything with adhesive on it, it doesn't really stick that great. I'm going to use um, some all-purpose glue, which is for fabric, and go in between and stick it down as well as, so at double security. And that's what I'm going to do all along the top. Instead of what I used to do, is to hand stitch this all the way down. But seeing as I'm doing it this way around, by the time I do the pinch pleats, uh, going inside that will hold it so we don't need to give ourselves extra work when we don't need to so I will do that now see now I've come to a stage where I have finished and there is the bulk of everything that's down here on the chair so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to fold it in half and work out the measurements but today I'm not going to actually work out the measurements I'm going to show you another way when you haven't got time or when you cannot get grasp how to do the measurement, this is a quick way for you to do it. It's a little bit of a waste, but um, I'm sure you would agree with me, it's worth it in the end because it's not that much of a waste. But I'm going to show you how to overcome certain things and just get on with what you need to do. Here we go. Now this valance measures 257 inches. I didn't work that out how much that was in centimetres, but you can do that. Um, now, if you stick to five spaces, five inches for the pleat um, to, and use the centre to start, all right, and then just do the marking out and then when you reach the measurement of what you need, then you just cut off the edge 
the ending and turn it under. But I like to use six inches for my pleat because I like to see them nice and chunky. Now I've got um, the width of my fabric here is 50, 52 inches I think or by the time I finish taking it in from 54 inches I've lost a little bit. So you have to be careful of that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do hmm, six inches and four inches. Now it has to be symmetrical. You cannot have it, well tell you the truth, if um, you haven't shaped it like mine's and it's just straight, then you can get away with it slightly off balance. But seeing as I've got my seam allowance here, Oh, actually isn't. That's good. Um, I will play around with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do six inches for the pleats and let me see, four and a half inches for the space and see how it works out and then calculate it and see if I've got the measurement of the window. I think the measurement of the window off the top of my head was 138 inches. So we'll see how we get on. Now, don't forget, always starting from the middle, not the end. Here we have the finished product. It's now finished. That cushion there is for a bay window. And there is for a small window. And this one is for the bay window. And those are the curtains for a bay window and a small window. So now, I'm not sure if I actually videoed the making of this, but anyway, you saw, you see the end result. There's where the zip is gone in. The zip is at the back there. And this section here is the back section for the bay window. all done. Tomorrow I'll be installing this one but actually I'll be delivering it but I won't be installing it because you know I'm on crutches and I can't go up a ladder. So I'm going to instruct. Do that again. I finish the curtains, pinch pleat curtains and the uh, valance which is going on a pelmet board which is already up. Now this customer here, I think it's over 10 years since I did her last lot and that's normally the pattern every 10 years they change their curtains. So even though I'm reducing my workroom, I still will be going, especially for those who are wanting to make garments. I will be teaching them bits and pieces about making garments. But tomorrow, as I said, I'm going to get this installed and then you will see the finished result. But the only thing is, I won't be steaming it when I put up. So they're going to have to deal with it themselves. Because I am on crutches and there's only so much I can do. As it happened, this woman broke my arm to make this curtain for her. I was not yet ready. As you know, after I finished my workroom and doing my house, I wasn't ready. But nevertheless, she's got something before Christmas now. Thank you for watching. Hello. So as you can see, I've now completed these curtains. Now you saw the making of the lining, but you never saw the making of the full making of these curtains. I showed you it in section. I showed you, I'll show you in a minute, but I'll show you, I showed you the making of the valance of the small win window, but I never showed you 
the making of this because it's for a customer and uh, time was against me and I had to move quickly. So as you can see, I've finished now and here we are, we're in my customer's house and as you can see, the cushions are down on, um, and they're made and they're finished as well as the other curtains. So um, what I've shown you, I hope that you're able to understand how the making of these curtains are because it is step by step and I, and I believe I did move very slow on it because um, I had a problem with my hips as well so I had to move very slow so I hope you enjoy the making and anything that you any questions that you want to ask me about it please feel free to ask me I'm gonna ask my my customer Angela to say a few words but guess what she doesn't want to come to the camera so we're gonna hear her voice in the background so Angela hello everyone <laughs> um, these are my new curtains made by the swags um, the best curtain maker ever ever um, although this is a dying trade as you can see this is her second time around um, 13 years ago she made curtains for the entire house except this room I've called her back because everyone that's come here has admired her work she's a genius a master in her field and I hope I never see her stop making curtains because she's just the best. Thank you. Thank you. Now that was a mouthful that I didn't expect. Thank you for that, Angela. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm really touched by when people really big me up like that. That's a really um, touch. Um, as it is, 13 years ago I wasn't doing filming. So uh, I also did a bedspread, a throw over for Angela as well. That's true. Uh, as well as the whole house. So yes, there's many people that I've done for it, and you, the public, will not see this. But thank you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next job. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>explain to you the reason why these curtains are touching the sill is that up the top it is adjustable but this one I purposely put it so that it helped with any draft that might be escaping so that's the reason why it is touching normally I don't do that I like to have it come, uh, a, a millimeter or so off the sill but today this is what you're gonna see lovely I'm pleased with it so those are pinch plate curtains underneath as well so as you can see there is the other one um, and it's now complete those are also pinch plates underneath as well so here ended thank you very much for watching my video